Hey guys, um, today we're going to talk about teaching our tools without having a tool setter. So things are a little different if I don't have a tool setter. I'm going to use my workpiece as a reference to teach this tool offset. Item number one is going to be under the settings page, setting number 64. Got to make sure that setting is turned on because I do want to use my work shift as a reference for my tool offsets. We're going to go over to our offsets page first and we're going to go over to our work shift page G54 and the big difference with not having a tool setter is having your work shift actually taught before you do anything else. Normally you would teach your tools with the probe and then teach your work shift second. In this case we're going to teach the work shift first and then the tools second. So I'm going to go ahead and close my door. I'm going to turn on my spindle and I'm going to use my cutting tool to actually touch the face of the part. So let's say I've now touched the face of my part. I'm going to go over to the offsets page and to the work offsets page. We're going to highlight our G54 Z axis column and press the Z face measure button. When we do that, a number is going to populate here, which is the actual distance that my Z axis is sitting now to the left of home position. So that's where that number actually comes from. It just means my turret had to move 16 inches to the left from home position. <clears throat> now that we've actually got a G54 work offset that is taught, we're going to use the F4 button to toggle back to tool offsets and we're going to teach Z and X for this job. Now in the case of Z, because this tool is actually our base reference tool, the only tool we're going to teach work offsets from, our Z geometry is going to remain zero everything's going to be longer or shorter than this base reference tool. So we're going to leave the Z alone for now and we're going to teach the X diameter. Doesn't have to be exact for this example, but let's say that's about a two inch diameter that we just touched off on. I can now go over to the X geometry page. I can press the X diameter measure button. And as soon as I do, it's going to ask me, what diameter are you touching right now? I'm going to type in two inches. This X axis geometry number, once again, is not a magic number. It is the actual distance from X home down to X zero, or how far the machine would have to travel to get to X zero from home position. So now that we've got these two values populated, I'm just going to do one additional thing to show you where the numbers are coming from. I'm going to go ahead and dial away a bit in Z, and I'm going to make a tool change over to tool number one. Now with tool number one in place, we're going to go ahead and touch off the face of that part. And what I want to show you guys is the Z axis geometry for tool number one. When I press Z face measure, it's going to be a small positive number. That is not also not a magic number. That just means that the part off tool is 409 thousandths longer than the base reference tool that we've used in this example. 